ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ನಾನು ಅಭಯ ಸಿಂಹ ಕನ್ನಡ ಸಿನಿಮಾ ಬರಹಗಾರ ಹಾಗೂ ನಿರ್ದೇಶಕ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಮಾತಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅಭಿಜಿತ್ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವ ಎಡಿಟರ್ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಭಿಜಿತ್ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ಹಾಗೂ ನಾನು ಸಾಧಾರಣ ಹದಿನೇಳು ವರ್ಷದಿಂದ ಪರಿಚಿತರು ಗೆಳೆಯರು ನಾವಿಬ್ಬರು ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಎಫ್ ಟಿ ಐ ಐ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿನಿಮಾವನ್ನು ಕಲ್ತಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಅದಾದ ನಂತರ ಅಭಿಜಿತ್ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ಮರಾಠಿ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಂದಿ ಸಿನಿಮಾ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಗೂ ಇತ್ತೀಚೆಗೆ ಓ ಟಿ ಟಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಶೋಗಳನ್ನು ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಕಂಟೆಂಟನ್ನು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಎಡಿಟರ್ ಆಗಿ ಮರಾಠಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಫೇಮಸ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದ ನ್ಯೂಡ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವ ಸಿನಿಮಾ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಯ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವಂಥ ಒಂದು ಸಿನಿಮಾ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಅಥವಾ ಮರಾಠಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದ ದಿಯೋಲ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವ ಸಿನಿಮಾ ರಾಜವಾಡ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವ ಸಿನಿಮಾ ರಾಜ ರಸೋಯ್ಯ ಆರ್ ಅಂದಾಜ್ ಅನೋಖಾ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವಂಥ ಒಂದು ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಹಾಗೆ ಓ ಟಿ ಟಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದು ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಫೇಮಸ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಂಥ ಕ್ರಿಮಿನಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವ ಶೋದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಡಿಟರ್ ಆಗಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದರು ಹಾಗೆ ಬೇತಾಳ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವಂಥ ಝೋಂಬಿ ವೆಬ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಎಡಿಟರ್ ಆಗಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದರು ಸೊ ಒಂದು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತು ವರ್ಷದಿಂದ ಎಡಿಟರ್ ಆಗಿ ಸಿನಿಮಾ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವರ ಒಂದಷ್ಟು ಅನುಭವಗಳನ್ನು ಮಾತಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಸೇರಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸಂವಹನಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಭಾಷೆಯಾಗಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಯಾಕೆಂದರೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಕನ್ನಡ ಬರೋದಿಲ್ಲ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಅನ್ಯತಾ ಭಾವಿಸಬಾರ್ದು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಅಭಿಜಿತ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಎಫ್ ಟಿ ಐ ಯುವರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಹೋಟೆಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಗ್ರಾಜುವೇಟ್ ಸೊ ವೈ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಹೌ ಡಿಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಯು i i'm still trying to figure out the answer to that question why films you know because what happened uh, i did hotel management because i was fond of cooking i was really i was a fan of sanjeev kapoor and i was fond of cooking so i used to watch his shows write him fan mail and stuff and so that drove me to bombay to go to the hotel school so i went to the hotel school and after passing out from there i worked in a hotel for a year and then i realized that you know i was not getting feed whatever i was making from the kitchen used to go out and or maybe you know i was a part of an assembly line where i was i i maybe i quit too early maybe i got tired too early but in my early days i used to peel uh, cu- cucumber for a very long time then cut tomatoes for a very long time and then it got frustrating and i and i didn't get any any feedback back from anywhere maybe because uh, so i i was feeling very unsatisfied at that point in time and uh, so i came back home and my uh, and there were i i belong to pune and uh, so my there were many of my theater friends who at that time were working in a new very brand new production house and this was the time when marathi channels were launching you know uh, on uh, ztv marathi then uh, etv marathi and uh, so many others you know all of us know so uh, and most of the uh, work was coming there in that studio in pune so i st- i started going there i talked to them and they said come you know find your beat and then uh, i s- fortunately i started with editing i got into the editing room and i never got out of there you know i worked with them and uh, like you said I, the best part about that company indian magic i was that uh, i got to do everything game shows uh, reality shows then uh, uh, interview based studio based programs and then of course a lot of fiction a lot of tele films and uh, and we were given a complete free hand to try out various things and songs and that was a great learning experience i worked with them for 3 years when late when i thought that you know now i should i should learn more edit uh, i should learn editing right here i was doing it but as you know television is more deadline driven you know so everything i was doing was to meet a deadline so meeting who is a good editor or okay, edit editor who can meet deadlines is a good editor in terms of television you know so so i wanted so uh, when i realized that uh, I, my father advised me why don't you try to go to get into ftii so i actually ftii was just around the corner from my house where i grew up where i lived all this while but i never really had looked that way you know while passing law college road i had never i had never looked that way and one day i looked that way and then i started entering it and then you know then uh, i i realized new aspects of editing that what is uh, actually ftti has slowed me down you know in a in a in a good way it slowed me down i started thinking before i started making cuts and Uh, i started uh, taking cuts in my i started thinking cuts in my dreams so that is where that is where the entire process of slowing down happened and 
looking at the story at, at the complete story and the rhythm of the story and then there are people uh, you meet the best part about FTI uh, thing is that you learn from each other be it your friends your batchmates your seniors your juniors you keep learning the the environment is such that every step you take there is something happening and then there is something that goes in your mind or maybe your state of mind is that you know you are very accepting at that point so that is how FTII happened and then uh, I came to Bombay in to, after uh, after in 2006 so what happened was uh, mostly I, uh, I, I used to wake up very early you know <laughs> so <laughs> then uh, and uh, I had a lot of time in my hand before the classes started so I started learning French uh, at uh, Olios Crosses and then uh, I got a scholarship to learn cinema at uh, in Paris in 2003 uh, in 2006 so this that was right after our diploma film had finished you know so i went to paris for some time and i came back and uh, then the course was over because we <laughs> me and you were the first ones to finish the diploma and then uh, i came to bombay and i started working as an assistant editor i worked on manorama 6 feet under as an assistant editor to jabin merchant and uh, she is one of my mentors in Bombay. You know, she has really handled me. She gave me a lot of uh, independent work later on also after we finished Manorama. And uh, she has really been a kind person and a mentor to me. And she has taught me so many things. So, uh, yeah. And then I started getting independent Marathi work because my immediate seniors, my contemporaries, all those people who had who I had worked with during my television days in Indian Magic Eye had also started making films in the in these uh, four or five years in between. And uh, they trusted me with their films. I'm again thankful to them. And, uh, so the work started and it started and it started. I was a fresh graduate when I came to film school. You, of course, had done a lot of work before coming to FTI. So what made you come to FTI? And, uh, what did you gain after FDI? Hmm. See, what made me come to FDI was was the quest to learn actually, and that I I wanted to I wanted to learn editing as a craft as an art, and uh, I I knew how to use a machine, and that's all. And uh, like I said earlier, FDI actually slowed me down, made me think about what I was doing, why I was doing it. And gave me so many new friends and all these three years I spent uh, look at, watching films. I would uh, very frankly admit I didn't enjoy watching many films uh, but I did watch them as an exercise which also is I think uh, important to do as a, as a student of films. Uh, and after FTII like I said uh, Jabin helped me uh, you know, say, or gather my ground in in Mumbai in by recommending me. By first of all, I for the first six months I worked with her. I just did that. I was with her on Manorama from January two thousand seven to July two thousand seven. We were doing only Manorama six feet under, and that was that was a very very good experience. She uh, sitting with the director, and you know. Uh, what is that magic of, like people say, ma editor ka magic? We, we, the first cut was ridiculously long of the film. And uh, all of us were wondering how would we get it down? How would we get it down? But at, at the end of four or five months, we actually brought it down. But till today, I can't pinpoint what exactly we deleted. Because it is, because it is there in the film in essence. And that is what that is that realization made me uh, realize the that magic of however cliche it uh, it may sound that magic of editing that you know you remove a certain portion from the film because after a point of watching it repeatedly it feels redundant that you know you don't need this and in that removing also you make sure that you have made the content of that scene a part of the film already. And that is why that reiteration becomes redundant and maybe that is why you remove it. So all this started playing in my head and then 
um, that ex that one experience enriched me a lot. Yes, see, in uh, in the institute, you you do a lot of exercises. You have a lot of workshops. It it channelizes you in one way. But when you when you do one feature film, when you witness the process of one feature film, it is a game changer. And with a person like Jabeen, of course, she's a uh, she she's a very good teacher also. So that's why she taught me. My, even if you open any of my projects today, it's, it looks exactly like the project, sorting the material, how to sort material. It looks like Jabin's project, till date. My assistants also say that this is a foolproof way of sorting things. You are an accomplished actor as well. So, uh, you know, you... But usually, you know, when people tend to get into uh, films, acting is one uh, area which most of them are attracted. No, because the glamour So you say, why editing? No, see the thing is, acting. Act, I mean, I'm uh, not saying I'm not saying just acting, but you could have gone. Whatever, into, uh, like, why, what, why editing? Like I said, no, like I said, like I said, you know, acting. Uh, as I uh, let me answer why uh, the acting acting bit was. I was doing theater, and there was only there's this only one person in the world who trusted me as an actor, and I worked with him. That's it. You know, and the next one is you. <laughs> in, in your films, whatever I acted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have acted, you know, acted in criminal justice as well. Huh, yeah, man, that is, you know, so, so, but, you know, in terms of length and, uh, so what, you realize your own limitations, but I tell you how, how all these things help, you know, acting, acting, there is a certain rhythm of every actor. So when you are an actor, you know, uh, where to cut? Where does this expression, how much do you hold an expression? How much do you hold a look? And how much do you, so that the, the, it gives you a sense, inherent sense of timing is what I realized. You know, I, this is all, this is all in hindsight. Huh? This, you don't realize as you are doing things. Sometimes when you make a cut, you realize that just because you are an actor, maybe, or you have acted, forget you are an actor, because you have acted and you have that instinct of being an actor, uh, you know where to cut. So, you know, I feel uh, this, uh, why now coming back to why editing of all the things, I actually I chanced upon editing first. You know, actually, then later I went, uh, went out with the camera, but I realized that I'm not a very outdoor person. You know? I don't like heat, rain. So, <laughs> Sitting at one place and watching rushes without sound is also, you know, can also make you feel tired. It's a different type of effort that you have to make. So you have, you realize over a period of time that what is, what you are, what can you do? You know, and I, uh, right from the beginning, now, see, all this is in hindsight. Like I said, we have been, uh, we know each other for a long time and then I have also been editing for now 15, 17 years. So, this is what I've realized right from the beginning, right from the childhood. I was never a team player. I always played karate, which was one-to-one -one sport, no team. You know? <laughs> then I played chess, which is when the, then I went to do weightlifting. So it was I was never in a team. I was always alone. And here also in um, in this uh, in in the editing room, there is director and editor. So there is one person whom I have to deal with. And I am very comfortable doing that. Is what I so so. This is what I've realized about myself after these years of editing. And uh, so I am very comfortable in that role. The moment there are so many many people around, I tend to then you know uh, keep silent for some time. <laughs> so, but uh, tell me something. You know, uh, Bombay or Hindi film industry being so close to Marathi film industry, like just probably three three hours away from the industry. How difficult it is to have sustain an industry there, like especially for a technician like you. If you are offered a Hindi film compared to a Marathi film, <laughs> no. See, uh, for see what happens. What happened in my? I haven't again. I haven't done many uh, Hindi films. I have done just two or three or whatever, and those are also not very huge budget films. And you know, so what happens is. If a Marathi film pays you 100 rupees, say, and Hindi film pays you 500 rupees, 
Marathi film will pay those hundred rupees over a period of three months, and Hindi film will pay you five hundred rupees over a period of one year or six months. So it is more or less the same thing in terms of money. I am telling. You. So for me, it I'm I'm okay Hindi, Marathi, anything. Of course, Hindi. Everybody wants to do Hindi, a big Hindi film with big stars. Uh, who who would not want to? But it has yet not come my way. So I am. <laughs> You know, I am not in a position to comment on that. Right, but no. My question is also uh, in terms of uh, for te technicians. Yeah, in a way, you're right. But uh, for actors or directors, directors like Umesh Kulkarni, you know, mm -hmm. what makes them stay back in Marathi and not be tempted by Hindi? Hmm. I mean, see, we were just talking last night. You know, so we are. So that's what he was saying. You know, every person has his own pace of living life and doing work. So Marathi, Hindi. If you take this pressure, you will not be. You will. You will become part of a of an assembly line or a constant pressure that will that will make you churn out work in a certain way. So do you want to be a part of that or not? Is your own decision. I don't think. If you if if you say yes, you want to do it, you should do it wholeheartedly. And if you if you don't, you choose a way. You leave leave a content life, and don't complain about it. So that is, I think it's a choice that one makes. I don't really, uh, you know, have a mind on that. It is a choice. Now shifting to your craft, you have started editing mm -hmm. video, and uh, then shifted to films, as in celluloids. And now again, probably shifted back to digital, not video, probably. Okay. So correct, correct. What uh, I mean, can you talk me through that? What was the journey like, and what is the difference? Do you feel like? See again, uh, what I really feel is what one needs to understand is the story. What What are you doing it for? Is a different thing altogether. You know, who is going to watch it? What is going to do? Is the, is it it? Fortunately for me, when I started with television, television was very literature based. The best of Marathi literature was being converted into uh, into televised episodes, which was which was again content based, which was about characters, their lives. Their they had a certain pace to their lives, and they had their uh, emotional complications. They had a reflection of their dark sides. So it trained me in a particular way to first attack the story and the the. The pace of the life of the character, you know, so that that really stayed with me, and I think that is the crux of the matter, which which sees your journey in the uh, through in the long in the long arc of things. So it started there, and then uh, uh, some documentary projects, and then some uh, like you said films. See films, I Marathi films I did for a, I'm doing them as we speak. So. Uh, what happens is you get you start when you read the script you in, immediately get to know now that where where is the what is the problem in the script and what is the what are the good points in the script then again i have the, uh, i have started this method of timing every event in the film you know as to i play the film, i my cuts i start playing the uh, film and i time the events should is it what time is it coming how is how closely is it packed or how loosely is it packed and then i have my own uh, set of timings which i which i try to adhere to maybe a few minutes here and there within the first reel how many points how many uh, how long should they basic common sense of telling a story and keeping people engaged so this when i developed when i was doing feature films now the game changed when Episodes came into st in the structure. Now what happens is, but the logic remains the same. You know, of the logic of timing remains the same. You have a forty earlier. You had a uh, say two hour film where you have to the uh, characters progress. Now you have a forty minute episode, but every episode is a complete story by itself, anyways. Isn't it? So then, I, I, th this understanding came that okay, now we are you are doing more or less the same thing. That you, what what is it? You have to keep the people engaged, and there should be a certain track to the story. So there, you know, what I feel is 
your uh, sensitivity towards the story is what matters at the end of the day the medium is well you know <laughs> is an uh, of course the medium who watches it and all those things are different definitely but also in terms of craft uh, it also has some change right in terms of uh, see uh, television also is episodic but uh, television and ott is quite different yes so i'm talking about that kind of a difference no see uh now now see television is see over a period of years i don't know i mean it is it is complete the story see like i said the stories that they are trying to tell on television today and the stories that they are telling on ott today are completely different and that is what makes the thing so the mother the mother in law slaps the daughter in law and then the father in law looks the son looks the brother in law looks and everybody looks so that one slap is almost 3 uh, minute long with with beach cut, repeated cuts and beach. so this is the story that they are telling good bad ugly it is up to the audience to decide but that is our reality today the form is becoming the content what is the reaction you know you are extending time so we are trained to look at it in a particular way and uh, but that is a way and that is a very successful uh, medium i mean uh, it is reaching thousands of people today and thousands crores of people today and people are being entertained by that so that is a very uh, legitimate uh, kind of entertainment and then you see a game of thrones kind of a thing where ned stark is killed immediately the moment you fall in love with him and he's killed you know then there is uh, there is more there is more to expect if you if you realize that somebody whom you have invested in for so many episodes and he's killed like that and then you're shocked so uh, uh, more uh, there is more content pack so like i said uh, for for me what I, what i like to do is time the events in the episode so that of course there's script there is you have to adhere to the script but then uh my contribution to it would be that that sense of timing that when would the first uh event happen when would the second event happen when would so so that is uh, what i try to do also how has it changed in terms of uh, the kind of footage you have been receiving uh, i don't care about it much because uh, 6k 4k 8k whatever for me i converted it to uh, a, a low resolution file and i work but what now what hap- what is happening is uh all these shows are coming up with tight deadlines and everybody is stressed so they are they are shooting with two at times three cameras at a time which is a way for me I, I, like you know i always was told by all of our cinematographer friends that you know lighting can happen only for one camera at a time and then using two cameras is a skill which is not which is not everybody's uh, cup of tea so what is happening is now there is a lot of coverage but there is a lack of shots if you know what i mean coverage is there you know you have this reaction you have this reaction you have this reaction but that is that is not a shot what is a shot you know a shot should evoke something it should tell you a story it should it should move you you should feel like cutting to it from here to take your story from this point to this point which is usually missing when people use more than one cameras at a time because not everybody knows how to work of course there are masters of course there are better people uh, who know how to use uh, two cameras or three cameras but this is one thing which i've been noticing uh, very commonly these days that you know the working with two cameras two cameras running at time just re- just results in a lot of humongous unusable footage or maybe not so interesting footage unusable forget unusable but not so interesting footage um, uh, my coming to ott and editing for ott like you've done mm-hmm. late night criminal justice um, and like couple of other shows uh, where you're not the only editor Uh, betal me see in betal what happened uh, uh i was i was told to do episode 3 and 4 uh, 2 and 4 and 1 uh, and 2 was somebody else was going to do it 
but uh, sahong he had to yeah, there was some prog- uh, he had to do something so he went after doing episode 1 so i ed- ended up editing 2 3 and 4 but yes see nowadays the, uh, pe- people are doing this you know that uh, uh, like when you edit a film you are the only editor so the whole vision is correct. your correct. but when there are two players as you said you <laughs> you are not a team player you know how yeah. does- How does it become difficult, or how does it become? No, I, okay. See, uh, what happens is, what happens is, uh, especially in web shows, there is a person called a showrunner, whose vision you have to trust, because not every time, not every time you cannot, you don't even have the time to go and watch the other episodes. No, because they are still being, uh, they're still. being edited something something or the other is happening every day so you don't exactly know what is the pace or what is the rhythm of it it is the show runner who knows so when i share my cuts with the show runner i you know usually uh, i i trust him that he is taking care of the homogeneity factor that there is the the the, the pace the, the what do you say the rhythm all these things are in tandem with the other editor we of course we share each other uh, each other's work and we go see them but what happens is it keeps changing every week so how many times will you leave your work and go and watch the other episode you have you have a fair idea as to what is happening in the other room yes you know but uh, that is why there is a person called uh, the shora does it become a constraint because then you have you are just earlier a- i thought earlier i thought it would become a constraint but i made peace with the fact See, because uh, this is going to happen now. Is I have made my peace with the fact that right now also, right before this lockdown happened, we started with one show where there were three other editors, eight episodes, and three, uh, three. See, because they are also uh, these uh, channels are coming with deadlines, and they have actors' dates for a limited uh, period of time, and so uh, they three, forget three editors. There were three directors also. and one of them was the showrunner so i was working way i mean i said i was what <laughs> i was doing his episodes and when we were all of us were going to come together and then jam so this is the this is the way work is happening see good bad i don't know but this is uh, I, uh, i i look at it as an assembly line kind of a thing you give your best to your episodes and trust the showrunner is what now the, you know when we claim that we are in creative field and uh, you know this is this cannot be a, uh, a assembly line etc etc uh, do you feel that you have just become a nut or bolt in a big assembly line at times i do feel at times i do feel but then see what i do is uh, see at the end of the day what am i gre- getting credit for i am getting credit for those two episodes i look at them as those mini films what is happening before them and what is going to happen after them see that is that 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 work has come to me you know if so that is my work you have to be sincere to your work then then thankfully along with all this i am doing my marathi things you know where where there is there is still uh, sanctity of the editor director relationship and there is uh, uh, i i am working with my close friends and there is some uh, interesting discussion and give and take happen and in the same breath i would say it is not uh, ott and all this work is nothing impure or nothing of any substandard quality it is really really good with ott is it is very heavily corporate driven so how does that affect in your editing room see what has happened is uh, uh, in the film film is usually director oriented a, a director driven i would say many a times where uh, uh, if you see the new crop of directors that came in they have uh, they wrote their own films they found money for that film and then they directed it and then so it is a director driven director driven medium what happens in ott is uh, like i said it is an assembly line the The, the writer writes it, goes to the production house. Their the directors are hired. Then directors shoot. They make their first cut. They submit their cut, and then they are asked to step out. Many a times, not every time. And then 
the corporate takes over over nitty gritty things how i mean in the editing room how long should this reaction be how long should this happen and that happen? everything many a times are direct uh, are directed by suits so so that so like i said you have to make peace you have to see first two cuts you have to give your best i mean to the story and then and then later on uh there later on you are left with very little choice because uh, they give you a printed feedback you know but you know what i have noticed that when you address feed you address a time coded feedback that at 10 26 39 do this and the, you lose the objectivity of the bigger picture you know I, what is what exactly is happening in the episode wo wo thoda sa compromise ho jata hai aise mujhe lagta hai but uh, then again i trust the decision makers at with this you know that if they have if they have given it to me in writing that you know change this and change that then i would like to trust them at a the point because first two three uh, iterations i have done i have done with the director done with the channels myself and uh, and then if on top of that if they can see something which is going to sh- uh, make the show better then i unquestioningly do it see if you have a strong opinion i feel if i have a strong opinion i i voice voice it out twice at different time intervals if it is listened to then i'm okay with it if not then i let go see because what what one has to understand is editor is not the originator of editing is not a fundamental art it is it is completely dependent on what you as a director will give me and then i will derive something of it and i should make peace that i am a helping hand to you isn't it so that piece i think i am trying to make as time is passing by and i will i will no, I, i will not absolve myself of everything i will keep you making aware that you know maybe this is going wrong maybe this is going wrong and then then if you say abhijit i know this is this is uh, you feel this is going wrong but i feel this 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 let us not discuss this finished so ideally what stage would you like to get into a project well uh, <clears throat> i i i would prefer if somebody sends me a script of uh, the uh, the film may, at least before shooting you know i like to i like to read the script before shooting and like i said uh, i will go through it i immediately pick up the pick up the phone or meet the person tell him or her that you know i feel this i feel this i feel this i feel this then he says okay you feel this noted you feel this noted this can not be possible so like like i said we uh, you have to be assertive but not imposing as an editor you know <laughs> so that's what i've learned over a period of time and uh, it is it is good to uh, read the script before the project goes on the floor and also talking about the corporate uh, uh, setup and corporate being involved in uh, filmmaking uh, has it changed anything in terms of uh, quality of life for uh, technicians in terms of payment organized payment etc yeah payments have become organized there are contracts uh, there are very very strict uh, there are uh, contracts doesn't mean it is followed but then there are contracts you know there uh, there are contracts for you know there is a code of conduct which is which you have to agree to and uh, which is interesting and uh, it has uh, the corporates also yeah i mean <clears throat> the the kind of studios if uh, the depending on the uh, kind of corporates you are working with the kind of studios that they offer you are better the kind of equipment they offer you are better you can hire better assistants because they give you fair amount of money and uh, yeah so uh, it has it has definitely changed it has definitely changed going back to your first point Uh, in terms of uh, shift from cooking to editing uh, about the feedback so how has the feedback system changed because of otts oh feedback system see now everybody is eager to give you is actually able uh, uh, eager to put you down you know 
<laughs> Only your family and friends are the people who will uh, give you honest feedback. But what I'm what I'm recently looking at reviews, people uh, they're clickbaits, you know, that Shah Rukh Khan's Betal is so bad that you will dot dot dot, and then you open it and it is a clickbait. <laughs> and talking bad about people has become uh, has become something uh, you know who can there's a competition who can talk more bad about somebody so the the moment there is a big name involved people are ready to run you down so i think it is a vicious competition then something is happening what again so what you you should just do your work and then let the audience and another uh, Another peculiar thing about OTT is nobody really knows how many people saw your show. Like in the box office, whatever, uh, whatever, how much ever fudged or how much ever uh, real, we used to get a feedback that "acha, itne log itna pune city mein das theater mein house hai. That meant something. That gave you uh, a ballpark figure as to how many people have seen the film. What is the word of mouth for four days at least? Are uh, Monday afternoon three shows full. So that used to say something about the film, you know, that on a working day, so many people went and so there's on an OTT, uh, the channel, of course, they have their own ways of measuring, but it never really reaches us. So all the shows that I've done, I've done eight shows on uh, eight or nine shows till date. Every show when it released, it was the number one show. <laughs> so every channel says that. Are you the number one show? Yeah. Then it became yeah. Our platform ka aaj tak ka number one show. So, but uh, I'm, uh, I remember um, uh, when Criminal Justice released, it created a you know, big impact. I mean, yes. People were lots of people were talking about it, and uh, it was appreciated. Hmm. Uh, so, but in terms of content. Uh, it was a good content. It was a nice uh, series, but uh, still the content was something which we had seen earlier in terms of uh, in terms of drama. Uh, the kind of drama we have seen in Indian uh, television or uh, Indian cinema before, like sort of a cold, cold room drama with different kind of twists. But when it came to uh, uh, Betan, yeah. so that's not a very familiar uh, content in Hindi. In Hindi. Yeah, in, in uh, like in India, you see, huh, people had made Go Goa gone, right? But uh, still, you know, that was not a content which was uh, easily consumed or uh, consumed. Uh, by yeah. Indian, uh, Correct. So, how difficult was it to create a, a bridge in terms of uh, aesthetic bridge between the zombie film genre to Indian audience? Was it something you still had? To uh, thankfully, it was it was written in a certain way that it had all the zombie film tropes, hmm. you know, uh, and it was more horror and less emo. See me. See the director was British, you know. One of the director, the showrunner was British. So, uh, and he he has he has been studying the zombie genre uh, for uh, quite a while now, and uh, we had a great time working together. I always, right from the beginning, I felt. That this is low on emotion. Me being a certain way, I've been fed with films of a certain man. So I always was, but but then he uh, he told me that you know this is not emotion. This is horror, and fear is the only emotion that you should feel right now. Then it I actually realigned myself to uh, the way of thinking, and then we started working on horror. Okay, so how, how was, I uh, have worked with the, the British director, the showrunner, how different is the approach in terms of an Indian or Indian director to, uh, are they more organized or? They no, no, I mean nothing really, organized though everybody is, you know, I, th I feel thankfully I have come across people who are uh, more or less the same degree of being organized and being, uh, I I think they knew, they know, everybody knows their material very well because, you know, our medium is so demanding, you cannot afford to be lax, really. I mean, you, know, you can't afford to be sloppy is what I feel. And 
especially when you're working with corporates like Netflix or maybe like uh, BBC or Hotstar or you know all these things, the, uh, you have to be on your toes. So it was a very, it was a very good experience actually. We had a great time. We we used to uh, uh, edit not more than four five five hours a day and uh, do intensive work. Then send it to Netflix. Netflix used to send their feedback, and Netflix was also very you know the feedback from Netflix also used to be very interesting as to they used to they used to suggest many things which would make the show better, which were not necessarily a part of the script. Earlier we used to feel, "Arey, yaar, this is never written. How can we do that?" But then after the first anger reaction subsided, then we say, "Why not do it? Let us try." And then we try and get into it, and then you know, do it, and then see if it works. And uh, many a times it did work, and then you end up thinking, "Why didn't I think of it?" So you know, so this is the way. so uh, yeah, so this is the way it happens. So yeah, it was uh, great talking to you, Abhijit. Uh, you know, it's uh, strange talking to you like this online. Uh, yeah. But it was interesting, and also after like seventeen years of our film institute, it was yeah. interesting to catch up again and discuss cinema in terms of you know, yeah. business or you know the <laughs> life that we discuss. But it was interesting to discuss. Yes, after. sir. It was so much fun. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me, Abhijit. Thank you, and Namaskar. So, this show, now Abhijit Deshpande, our people, cinema editing, how it is going to be done, the development, the OTT, the new type of the house development, the new type of the matter. So, you guys, this time, you know, the comments, you know, David, you know, the very comment section, you know, the few C, you know, this type of the guys, our people, all of you subscribe, you know, David, you know, thank you.